I was talking with a client and uh, she was saying that she doesn't want to be labeled for doing just one thing because she provides services in different areas and she really is more of a holistic person. Um, she didn't say those words exactly, but uh, basically there was a concern about being pigeonholed. And I know some of you may have that concern as well because some of you also offer a, a wide range of skills and services or you you really can't be labeled as one thing or another thing. However, I want to give you a different perspective on this. I prefer to be pigeonholed. I, I want to be labeled in my work anyway. And before I go any, any further and describe why that is, I would love to know how would you label me if you were describing me to a friend of yours or a colleague of yours, it's like, oh, George, he is the, so how would you, what's the shortest phrase you would use to, or word or phrase you would use to describe me, describe my work? Uh, if you don't mind, go ahead and pause this recording right now and let me know in the comments below. Okay. Um, yeah, why don't you do that first, and then and then we'll go on. So when I when I go to the dog park, um, walking my dog and at the dog park, and someone asks me, "So, uh, what do you do for work?" I don't say authentic business coach, or I am a you know sustainable livelihood advisor or whatever, whatever I say oh I'm a business consultant uh, or I work in marketing oh marketing oh yeah I know what marketing is oh I know what business consulting means I think what kind of businesses do you work with and then there goes if I say oh I'm an authentic business coach it's like oh well, all right well they might say what, what does that mean or they might just feel dumb and not not feel like they know what that is and and go on and uh, but but whether or not I describe well, you know authentic business coach you know in my industry of business coaching There's all these people who do this blah, 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 blah. At the end of the conversation they'll walk away and go I don't, I don't really know what that guy does uh, They don't have a place for me in their head. I would rather them walk away and go. Oh, yeah That guy has something to do with marketing That guy has something to do with marketing or that guy is a business consultant So if I have a business consult question, I'll ask him Oh, that guy's a marketing guy. So if I have a marketing question, I'll ask him. That's all I want. Some of you, uh, maybe not you watching this, because a lot of you watching this have watched enough of my videos to kind of have a more holistic picture of what I do. But a lot of people, when they first encounter me, they think, oh, George, uh, he is the Facebook ads expert. They label me as the Facebook ads expert. That's, that's what I am in their mind. And... Should I protest and say, no, 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 I do so much more than Facebook ads. I'm really more about spiritual transformation through business. That, that's really what I want to talk about. That's really, you know, or I, I'm really about helping a solopreneur build their business in all kinds of ways and, and figuring that stuff out, not just the Facebook ads, but also their, you know, their offering and their, their, their writing, their videos, their, um, I don't even know what I do. <laughs> I just do a lot of different things. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, and I would rather that somebody walks away and goes, yeah, that's a Facebook ads guy because that's a place, they have a place for me in their head. And when they have a Facebook question, they'll come back to me. And then if I can help them out, they'll very likely want to know more about what, what else I do. They'll, they'll follow me and then, you know, this, oh, wow, you also do this. You also teach that. That's wonderful. So, what about you? Are you afraid of getting pigeonholed for one thing? Oh, it's too mainstream. It's not really, it's not spiritual enough or it's not really holistic enough. It's not really what I do. If, if you're trying to get people to, to parrot back the words that you tell them about what you do, you know, they're probably not going to be able to. They're, they're going to parrot back something that is very 
normal or mainstream. Oh, you are a, you're a life coach, right? Yeah, I've heard of life coaches. No, I'm not just a life coach. I'm a spiritual transformational, blah, 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 all this stuff. Okay. Oh, you're a life coach, right? Okay. All right. So next time. Okay. So, oh, you're a career coach. No, I'm not just a career coach. I, I really help people come to a purpose of what they blah, blah, blah. But I don't have a space in my head for purpose counseling. I, don't, I just don't have a space. I don't, know, I don't think I should spend money on that. I know I should spend money on career coaching. Maybe I should spend money on life coaching. Probably should spend money on therapy. But a purpose coach who blah, 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 all this stuff, I don't. Now, that's, that is, that becomes, uh, I should say, as you build your audience and as you educate them with your content, they will, they will think of you as something else. They will, um, they will be willing and, 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 and able to put you with, as a unique place in their mind and their heart. But it takes quite a bit of work and time to create that unique place in someone's mind and heart. It doesn't usually happen in the beginning. Uh, now, word of mouth really helps, but again, word of mouth means you have built up a large enough audience where the word of mouth starts to take care of itself. But without a big audience, word of mouth is trickles, you know, tr trickles and, and it's hard to get business that way. So um, be pigeonholed. Be pigeon. So think of your. So you might like basically try to describe yourself in in many different ways. In many different like. Okay, the most mainstream person. What would they call you? They would call you a therapist. Oh no, you're not really a therapist. You're kind of like a therapist. You're a you're a coach. Oh yeah, life coach. I've heard of that. Right. What's the most mainstream definition of you? And then you can go all the way to like if somebody is you know has watched every one of your videos and read every one of your articles, they would totally know, oh yeah, George Cow was the authentic business coach because in the business coaching industry, they are, they're going to be able to pair it back what you've said for hundreds of videos. <laughs> you know, you, you know, so a lot of you who are watching this right now can actually give quite a holistic description of me, but any of you watching this you know, within the first dozen videos, oh yeah, George, he's like the mar he's marketing, I think that's what he does. Like he helps people like get more clients, right? That's what he does. Of course, those of you who, have, who know me well say, oh no, that's, he does way more than that. And that's not, the people who help people do marketing, they're usually very sharky and all that, right? But again, most people won't be able to understand that and have a place in their head. They'll, they'll forget. And, and the forgetting is not, a, is not their fault. It's just that in the modern world, we have, are inundated with so much information that we need shortcuts to categorize people. I need shortcuts for you. Oh, Captain, uh, well now I think of Captain as a Facebook expert, right? Well, I know Captain better because we, we interact more, but it's like, oh yeah, Captain also has a relationship coaching business. But even relationship coaching is like, what, what is that? Is that kind of like a therapist? You know, if, if we were talking to a mainstream person, right? Again, not just a mainstream person, I should say somebody who doesn't really, hasn't consumed enough of your content. Uh, even if they're not mainstream, even they're more values aligned with you or whatever. It's just even the most values, values aligned person are going to use mainstream words because that's the place they have in, in, in their head for you, for someone like you, until they have built up enough relationship with you through your content to have a special place. Now, they're going to have a special place now for, 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 for Captain, you see. Um, so I hope this helps. And basically... What I encourage you to do is to ask your clients. If you don't have any clients yet, you can ask your, your friends, okay? Ask your friends or ask your audience uh, once a year, maybe more. Hey, how would you quickly describe me? What professional title would you give me when you're just telling them? Like what comes off your tongue naturally when you, just, when you say, oh, yeah, you know, Christine is a – what life coach what is the most mainstream way that it's a simple way to describe it because again like i said if people can't categorize you they can't remember you it, just, it doesn't matter how fancy and intriguing your description is. it doesn't matter they don't remember that they just on the day to day they just, they know life coaches they know therapists they know you know marriage counselors they know you know 
pastors, they know spiritual guru, maybe that the term, you know, they know these things, but it's like a fancy term, whatever. It's like, so you want people to pigeonhole you. So at least they remember you and then they come back to you for that thing. That's a mainstream thing, whatever th the thing they pigeonholed you for. And then they'll discover, oh my God, you're not just a life coach. You're a spiritual, you're very, you have a spiritual perspective that is very purpose driven and then they can they can rave all about you okay um oh george you're not just a marketing guy you're also very uh you know caring and you're genuine and oh it's very different from most marketing now i'm going to put a special place in my mind for you but but i couldn't have remembered you otherwise right someone might say to me so so what about you what is your what is your different levels of describing so again at the dog park, I'll say I'm a, bus I'm a business consultant or a marketing consultant, okay? And then to a fellow coach who knows more about this kind of industry, I might say I'm a business coach or a marketing coach. Like, oh, market coach and marketing. Okay, that makes sense a little bit more because I'm a fellow coach myself. To somebody who's viewed a lot of my videos, then I'm an authentic business coach. Now you know what that means. But you got to have these different levels of explanation, and, and you don't care how people pigeonhole you as long as they do. Please pigeonhole me. Please pigeonhole me so that you remember me, right? Um, so I hope this is helpful. Uh, thanks for those who are joining me here. Krista, Alejandra, Jason, Gudrun, um, Michelle, Captain, and Christine. Those are the ones I'm able to see here anyway. And um, let's see here. Yeah, so Alejandra says yes. We we need we need shortcuts for people to to identify us. Um, yes, absolutely. So, all right, that's all for now. Go ahead and ask your clients or ask your friends. How do you describe me? Quickly, just you know, you're at a party and someone says, "Oh yeah, um, where do you go for this kind of help?" Oh yeah, my friend so and so. He he is a he or she is a you know. All right, uh, I look forward to seeing what you want to ask below or again, how would you, if you were to describe me and maybe you can give me multiple levels. Oh yeah, George, I would describe you as that or this or this or you know, whatever you can think of as you're talking about me to a friend, what would you say? All right, take care until the next video, be well.